exploring the role of biopsy proven diabetic axonal neuropathy in outcomes of carpal tunnel release in diabetic and non diabetic populations. My name is Jose J. Monsivais. I'm an, I'm a clinical professor at, at the Morrell College of Osteopathic Medicine in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and medical director of the Yahend and Microsurgery Center of El Paso in El Paso, Texas. Let's go into this study. Disclosure, yeah, we have no financial conflicts of interest or relationships to disclose. This is our IRB number. The diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome remains a, a clinical diagnosis. The supporting uh, tools for this diagnosis may include the CTS-6 questionnaire, the Boston Carpal Tunnel Questionnaire, supported by uh, ancillary studies such as ultrasound, neuroconduction studies that carry a specificity of 94 to 99 percent and sensitivity from 56 to 85 percent. Electromyography may is useful in uh, advanced cases. The skin biopsy is uh, the, this is the purpose of our report. The uh, 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 usefulness in, uh, in, the, in the diagnosis of axonal neuropathy. Specificity ranges between 89 and 97 percent. Sensitivity between 88 and 92 percent. Outcomes of carpal tunnel release in diabetic and not diabetic populations are conflicting and have been the source of multiple uh, controversies to the point that some uh, researchers recommended not to perform carpal tunnel syndrome uh, release in diabetics. Conflicting outcomes potentially are due to the lack of differentiation neuropathy and those without axonal neuropathy. Further, most of the reported studies don't include as many evaluation parameters as we did to give us a broader spectrum of the actual outcome. Axonal neuropathy is optimally and objectively diagnosed using skin biopsies. The, the, the aim of the study was to characterize the difference in recovery rate after carpal tunnel release between patients without diabetes mellitus and patients with diabetes mellitus who have axonal neuropathy and those without axonal neuropathy using the objective data of skin biopsy to accurately diagnose small fiber neuropathy as recommended by the Joint Task Force the EFNS in the perspective review study design with the prospective component was carried out. 65 diabetic and 106 non diabetics constituted our patient pool. Measurements used for the, for the outcome were the disabilities of arm, shoulder, and hand or dash. The brief pain inventory or BPI measures also pain as well as a more of a multi dimensional assessment. One Baker scale and numeric scale are pain scales. The Boston Carpal Tunnel Questionnaire. Skin biopsy was taken at the time of surgery for nerve fiber density and morphology. 15 non diabetic patients underwent skin biopsies and service control. Statistical analysis a power analysis was, was done to, in recommendation by the statistician it was that to achieve an 80% power, we needed 24 patients in each. So 90% 90 power, we needed 34 in each week. Group one consisted of a total of 106. Group two 
65 patients. A two sample t test was used to obtain the p value. False. Non diabetic patients showed improvement post operatively in all measured parameters. Diabetic patients without axonal neuropathy had a similar but slightly decreased recovery rate as compared to non diabetics. Of the 50 biopsies taken from diabetic patients, 25 were positive for small fiber neuropathy and 25 were negative. Those with positive small fiber or axonal neuropathy, we showed lower recovery scores than both, uh, both non-diabetics and diabetics without axonal neuropathy. There's the comparison in the two scales showing the 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 dash score and uh, did not reach statistically statistically significant in diabetics. When we compare diabetics with neuropathy and without, we saw that the, the result was worse in diabetics with neuropathy as uh, expressed in the DASH and BPI questionnaire scores. Significance is that the pain scale, the, the numeric pain scales and the one meter scales were show statistically significant value. That means that across the board, all groups in all, in all the diabetics and non-diabetics there was a system. pain. And I think it's important because pain is prominent uh, uh, symptom in uh, median neuropathy, especially in diabetics. So in conclusion, carpal tunnel release in all groups showed a significant improvement and most, most scales, supporting the appropriateness of surgery on all groups. Results in patients with diabetes and biopsy proven axonal neuropathy suggest that a longer time is required for patients with axonal neuropathy to see outcomes comparable to non-diabetics and diabetics without axonal neuropathy. Patients with increased scale scores or clinical suspicion for axonal neuropathy can be offered the option of undergoing a biopsy and counseling about the risk of increased time to meet the outcomes comparable to non diabetics and diabetics without axonal neuropathy. Thank you.